there everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary from Mary Matthews Handmade and this is my crafty vlog number 32. <laughs> Had to check then. <laughs> I'm very well thank you. Now if you don't know me my name is Mary I live in a small cottage in West Sussex which is in the very southeast of England and I like all things crafty and these weekly vlogs are just my way of letting you know what I've been up to. Now for those of you returning you will know I've been away on a little adventure. So last week I actually walked part of Hadrian's Wall. Now if you don't know Hadrian's Wall was built approximately or just less just under 2,000 years ago when we were part of the Roman Empire here in England and it's at the very top of England so it was to separate England from Scotland so what they did is they built a wall literally from coast to coast is approximately 80 80 miles 80 meters 80 miles long depending on who you listen to some say 78 some say 80 miles long and what you can do now is walk part of the path that that wall took some of it has disappeared some of it's buried but a lot of it still does exist today so they did those romans did a very good job because some of the time we were on the wall itself so I did this with my son, my mum, who a lot of you will have seen before, and my stepdad, John. So we just did it. It was just a challenge for ourselves. We went, we flew up to Newcastle last Monday. We walked on the Tuesday, the Wednesday and the Thursday. So about just over 30 miles, the middle part of the wall, which is just the scenery is fantastic. And then on the Friday, we came back. Now, as you can see, the weather there was glorious and I did take some videos and some photographs and what I've put in the description box down below, a little playlist, you've got three days worth of film, about six, seven minutes per day. I've just taken some shots of the scenery of the wall it's just fantastic. It's well worth just grabbing a coffee and having a watch. It's very, very relaxing. So down in the description box below, along with my other playlists, I've got Hadrian's Wall 2021, I've called it, so you can see what we got up to. So not very crafty to start with, but I do know a lot of you enjoy seeing the pictures that I take when I go on my local walks down here in, on the South Downs. So um, it's worth a look, definitely. Anyway, what else have I been up to? Not a lot of crafts, obviously, because I wasn't here. When I last spoke to you, I was going to do the tutorial for my lanterns. You can see one just here. That's the one that I hooked up in the tutorial. So um, I know a lot of you have been having a go. I do know that Lynn has gone mad. She's got loads. So I tend to use my little battery operated candles just for safety. Um, so if you follow my tutorial, you can just hook yourself up, just use any jar, any size. I explain in the tutorial how to adapt the pattern to maybe taller or wider jars, whatever you've got. So, you know, it's worth recycling those jars and turning them into some lovely, colourful lanterns. Now, some people are going to use them in the garden. Um, maybe you could do Halloween colours, they would look fab. Um, nice orange, black and green. Or like I've made mine, this one I actually made for last Christmas in the red colour. So again, red, green, white, whatever your colour scheme is. So if you want to have a go at that, again, it'll be in my playlist down below, um, the crochet tutorials. So thank you for all your comments on that one. They're nice, once you get into the swing of them, they're nice, quick and easy. Now you can also use them as vases. Now whether you'd want the holes 
I'm not sure. Literally, if you want to make this into a vase, just don't miss out the stitches. Just as you're going around in every stitch that you do, just put your trebles in there. And then this will become as solid as this. And you could use that as a nice vase. Now, I have been thinking about something little for this week's tutorial. Now, I have been looking at people's tutorials here on YouTube for these fabulous butterflies, but I want to have a go and sort of put my own twist to them. So I've hooked up something very similar, but I want to make the wings a little bit more pointy if you can see, a little bit more sort of butterfly shaped and also um, I'm going to add a border to mine so I can come out even further here, make it just that little bit more pointy going around. So I've just got to work out how to put the border on, then I'll add the body a very similar to how they've been doing it on YouTube and then we'll add some antennae. So, this could well be, if I can just work that out, this week's tutorial. So if you're after making some butterflies, people turn them into attachments for say like hair grips or hair ties. You can add them to your summer trees, just hang them, add them to gifts, that's a nice idea. So keep them peeled, there'll be a butterfly tutorial coming up sometime this week, hopefully. <laughs> Um, now, the only other thing that I sort of had a play at, if you remember um, the magazine that I showed you last time, Simply Crochet magazine, we were looking at Granny Square containers. Now, they did a larger one, but I just found these at Granny Square, so I've got five here. And then all I've done is joined them using UK doubles, that's US singles. If you can see all the way around, that's how I've joined them to make a little box. Now they had left this like this. Now, as I say, theirs was larger. Um, now I have starched this within an, within an inch of its life and it's still <laughs> quite flimsy. So unless you're gonna use it as a lantern maybe definitely definitely don't use naked flame if you're gonna literally do that um, unless you're going to use it like that then I would suggest what I'm going to do I know this isn't the right size but I'm very much into my box making as well at the moment is either make a fabric box to put inside so line it or just literally you could make a cardboard box put inside which is what I'm going to do and then you could use something like that maybe in a ch child's bedroom or something put some pens in there so you'd need to use quite rigid cardboard I would suggest just make an inner box but I think you'll agree that looks quite cute so that's just a way of using up your granny squares to make a lovely little container so that was an idea in last month's Simply Crochet magazine. Now I have this month's here. So this arrived when I was away. This is edition 112. Wow. <laughs> wow, they've been going for some time. What I'll do is I'll show you what always comes with Simply Crochet. They do send free gifts. So I'm just going to show you what comes with this month. So you have this fabulous little leaflet to make these gorgeous little dinosaurs aren't they cute look at that one there so you have your own little patterned leaflet to make up those this month you also get a double ended crochet hook now it's 4.5 millimeter and a 2.5 millimeter so I don't tend to go that small normally. Where are my glasses? Um, so that's a free gift there. Now I tend to stick to my clover and more. So what I'm going to do is save this for another giveaway at some stage. Now, talking of giveaways, I have to apologise to Linda. Now Linda won the last 
giveaway and I was going to send that parcel off to you Linda just before I went away. I forgot. So I'm sorry. It's gone now. It's on its way to you now. But you know, you might be thinking, oh blimey, it takes a long time. But it, um, I literally simply forgot. Oof. What can I say? I'm menopausal. So it is on its way. So apologies, Linda. It'll be worth it in the end. Anyway, what I tend to do with the crochet hooks as I say because I have my favourites I will keep that and add it to one of my giveaways. Now they have also included a UK yarn shop guide so this is just listing all the independent yarn shops here in the UK so it separated them out into England, Wales, Ireland, Scotland and although saying that the closest one to me here is Brighton. There used to be one in the village down the road. That closed, unfortunately. Um, it was sort of within a fabric shop. Another fabric shop has opened, but they have no yarn. So um, my closest one is Brighton, which I would say, how long is that going to take? 40 minutes, 45 minutes, but tends to be a bit of a pain to park. Parking costs like a thousand pounds an hour um so i don't tend to go and so that's the closest one they're all in london um so i don't know i'm going to look through see maybe if they have websites um this is the only problem um whether they're close to you i don't know but it's it's worth having what i will do is go through the ones that are most local to me and just see if they have a website so maybe I could order from them online. So that comes with it as well. But the actual magazine does have some wonderful patterns. Now let me just show you this one here. This is using Lily's Sugar and Cream those lovely granny stitch bags. Now I do know that Lynn has made a lovely granny square bag. I think yours is better Lynn than that but that's nice. Using very simple colours there. Okay that was one of the one of the patterns that sort of shouted out to me. They do have this wonderful jumper. Now look at these sleeves. Aren't they fantastic? I could never wear that. I'd be hooking this on everything. But I mean, they do look lovely, but I'm like, mm, for sleeves, really? My friend Jackie wears tops like this and she had a frozen shoulder, ran down the stairs, hooked that on the banister and she was back at square one. So yes, not all that practical, but they look fantastic. So there's that pattern in there. I do like this idea. Maybe you could do this with some granny squares, just join them all together. I'm not sure with all the fancy sort of points whether they would hold their shape. You'd really need to block that well. But, you know, if we did something sort of hexagon but then joined it with maybe a slightly sturdier border, that would be a nice idea. Obviously, we're in the height of summer here, but people are already getting in their autumn winter ideas. Now this one, I'm just highlighting for Margaret because she's going to see this. She's just going to go mad. Look at that jellyfish bunting. So I've made a jellyfish before from Hooked by Robin. So you could use that pattern and just join them all together. But look at those and that rainbow colours. So that is just a few of the patterns in edition 112 of Simply Crochet magazine. So that's all I've been up to I'm afraid. As I say I've been away so I didn't take any crafting with me. We literally went with hand luggage so no room I'm afraid. Plus we were watching football and tennis. Very exciting. Um, now I am still, <laughs> still going on with my blanket. I'm nearly there. I've just got a few more rows. I think I said that to you last time. 
But I did just want to make a comment about, now I was watching somebody, who was it? I think it was Joyce from Ruby Moss Cottage. I love her, I love her yurt casts. She lives in a yurt, it's fantastic. And she was talking about the fact that she, she does still find it quite difficult to keep her sides nice and straight. Now I have been crocheting for a few years now, but I still don't mind saying, and this is just a tip, when I get to my ends, I still do mark that last stitch. So, you know, don't be worrying about doing that. When I get to the end of my row, I turn, I do a couple of stitches and then I mark the first stitch. That way, when you get to each end, you know exactly where your last stitch is. You do your turning chain, you turn, and you know exactly where your first stitch is and therefore you will keep your lovely straight edges. So that's just a little tip, um, you know, there's no shame in doing that at all. Um, I would most probably know exactly where they are but it's just in case, you know, you go off and you leave a project for a while and it takes a while to get back into the right tension that you're using. So just pop those stitch markers in and then when you come to the end of your row, you know exactly where that last stitch is going to be. So that's me for this week, short and sweet, but obviously I've got more time now to get some crafting done. So I do hope that you're going to have a wonderful week. Whatever it is that you're doing, do let me know what you've been up to in the comments down below and I will see you here next time. Bye bye.